from the beginning, I thought it was really interesting because no matter, like some people have jobs where they're accountants and they do the same thing during their careers, but the weather is always changing. So I don't know, that was, that was alluring to me as a kid. It, like mm -hmm. no matter what, every different day that you come into work, you might have like the same situation come, but you're always dealing with something different than what you had yesterday. So okay. I enjoy the, the added challenge of having to do something different every day. The, the idea first came up, we had a talent show, I believe kindergarten year. And so I wasn't good at anything when I was in kindergarten. I played baseball and I was terrible at it. But I was really interested in weather even then. So uh, my mom knew that I was interested. So she was like, well, my, my two uh, heroes like with weather were Spencer Atkins. And then at the time there was a guy named Mike McVeigh. Uh, they were both here at 13. And so I wanted to dress as one of them and we chose Spencer, he was the chief, so we, we decided for Halloween we were gonna dress as, as Spencer, so, and I think it worked really well, you know, I, th I think we pulled it off well, maybe, you know, I think we got the hair down just about right, so. <laughs> I think he was just, weather department, what is that like for you? Um, it's, it's really exciting, it's a little nerve wracking as well, because, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I've worked really hard to get to the point where I am now, um, and I've always wanted to get to this point, so mm -hmm. it's very satisfying that I've gotten the opportunity, but now that I've gotten the opportunity, I feel like I need to work extra hard to show that I'm deserving of this spot. Um, so it, it's a little nerve wracking as well, but it's, it's pretty cool getting to work alongside, you know, somebody you've looked up to literally almost your whole life. So it's, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> what is it from him? Oh, it, it's very gratifying. Uh, you know, uh, I, I've spent a lot of time, you know, outside of work, you know, even while working here, just trying to learn as much as I can. and you know, using that to apply myself to, you know, hopefully using for another job position like this. So, um, you know, there are a lot of things that I've really been working on to, to try to prepare myself for this day. I didn't think it would come quite this soon, so that's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to, to sh you know, hopefully show folks that, you know, they can depend on me for, for a good weather forecast. And I like to have fun with it too, so I'm looking forward to that. I, I've been known in the newsroom as being kind of a, especially on the morning shift, as being kind of a, a pun king, so, especially king of the dad puns. So anybody that's good for a good pun, I, I think I'm going to, uh, gonna impress. <laughs> I, my pun game is strong. <laughs> uh, Brian is great. So like, when I've worked with Spencer, I've worked, I've, don't get me wrong, I've done a lot of like production related things, but, um, he's kind of helped me more with, you know, making sure the product look, looks good on TV, um, you know, make sure the graphics look good. Brian is, Brian has such a, a way with his audience, you know, of, of engaging with people. And that's something that I still think I've got to work on to, you know, keep working on to get better and better. And so Brian has been like, uh, he's been showing me different ways of engaging with the audience, you know, making people laugh, but still giving a, a good weather forecast. And that is an art that is not easy to come by. So um, I'm really lucky to, to have that side as well. I feel like I've kind of got both sides, you know, Spencer's showing me, you know, some of the science behind it. You know, I'm still learning every day. Um, he shows me the, the production. And then Brian not only shows me production, but he shows me how to, you know, move, you know, from one side to the other, you know, be nice and loose. and. Uh, and then engage, which obviously is just as important as giving the weather forecast. Somebody wants to like a, you know, Joe Schmo just going up there and giving a boring forecast that nobody cares about, so. Well, Brian is definitely, just to make sure you stay loose and if you mess up, you know, just keep rolling with it. Um, you know, they're, you're gonna mess up on TV, it's just a matter of time, you know, um, just to keep going with the next punch. Um, Spencer w has always been, I I've been in touch with Spencer for a long time, so I, I would say not really necessarily in the studio now, but he's always told me just to keep at it and just to keep working on it. So that, I know there have been times I've been discouraged, like just certain things going on where, you know, I have, I felt like, well, maybe this isn't for me or, you know, maybe I'm just not going to quite ever get there. But, you know, he was always somebody that it was rooting me on from pretty much the beginning, you know, ever since I made him look good in that Halloween costume. So. Um, I would like to say that was probably the best advice he ever gave me. That's, that's pretty cool. I, I love kids, so uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, to getting to go around like schools and things like that. But I mean, I think that's kind of, I think that kind of makes it full circle almost a little bit because, you know, there's always somebody that's watching you, you know, no matter the age. And, you know, I was five when I first started watching him and always thought he was super cool on TV. And, you know, now I get the chance to, you know, it's kind of almost deja vu in a way, I'm, you know. 
maybe a few years down the road, the same situation will happen. And, you know, and I, I want to help people, you know, get to a position like this, just like Spencer helped me. So, you know, I, I see it as definitely a positive for sure. I've always been somebody that I don't, I don't ever want to like have somebody think that I'm not working as hard as I could be. So, I mean, I take any job very as seriously as I possibly can and, you know, not looking at it as, you know, what can I gain from this, but, you know, I just want, you know, if somebody wants you to do something, they have purpose for it. So I, I like to make, you know, I like to satisfy people and, you know, make sure I'm doing a good job. So I, I take any kind of work that I do seriously, even if it's just like doing yard work, I, like I'm a little OCD about weed eating and stuff <laughs> like that. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I've come a long way, but I'm always, like you should, I feel like you should always be learning. There's always someone that even in the business that knows more than what you do. So, you know, I know I'm gonna mess up sometimes, but I feel like as long as I show that I'm willing to learn and mm -hmm. willing to keep working at it, they'll respect that and be more understanding of what I made a mistake on and just be like, was part of the learning process. I, as far as West Virginia is concerned, I, I spent a lot of like my my teenage years and into college, like going around and checking out different state parks and going to different hiking trails, visiting different towns. I, I love visiting small towns, so like especially like I mean you can tell I mean any kind of good like local eatery that's what I am all about. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't I, I, like I would put ten local eateries over like my favorite fast food place. So. <laughs> Most of my family's always been from around here. Like my, my sister, my twin sister, she's an elementary school teacher. My mom's a preschool teacher. My dad's worked at a grocery store for 20 years right here in Charleston. So, um, you know, we, we've always been really close, so. And you're an adult, right? Yeah, I mean, when I came to work here, I mean, I started working less than a month before the flood. So I hadn't been here very long. So I feel like, I kind of felt like I had a lot to prove. And I had had several people that had, you know, they're like, hey, we don't know anything about this guy, but we're gonna give him a shot at least, so. Um, I kind of felt like I owed it to them to, to not let them down. Obviously, it was kind of a difficult circumstance, so I had to take at least a couple days off. Um, but, you know, when once we got that taken care of for the most part, you know, it was like I have still got a job to do, and people are still depending on me even, you know, with what's going on to, to get stuff done. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't like letting people down. So, you know, I, I felt like they, they deserved it, and, you know, I was returning the favor for them giving me a shot. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I've always felt like that, you know, people just kind of threw darts at me to, to get me into the newsroom. So the least I could do is show them that, you know, I want to be here and, mm -hmm. yeah, I belong working here. So yeah, I take that very seriously. And you also like to fascinate you. I am fascinated by science, like just meteorology in general. I love climatology. So any kind of like historic weather event that you know, people might want to know more about, I am always looking for ideas. So that's something that like, I spend a little too much time with probably. Um, I've done several research projects on different events that have occurred here in the area, like over the last 30 years. So um, the, the June 2016 floods was just kind of the latest thing that I've been working on. Um, obviously, I had a little extra interest in it because it affected me personally, but um, any kind of like uh, significant weather event that goes on around here, I love just diving deep into, you know, just like what caused it, how often does it happen? you know, why did it impact the people that it did or why did it cause so much impact? You know, was it like infrastructure or what have you? But that kind of stuff has always fascinated me. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I went to Herbert Hoover High School. So uh, love, love the Huskies, love going to football games. Still try to when I can, although I do work a lot. Um, I do love going to games. Um, so look, looking forward to the new school. Um, I do hold the original uh, pie memorization record. We had a, you had a March 14th is pie day, so the very first year that they did it, I was a sophomore in high school. My teacher will test. I memorized 143 digits of pi for pi day. So I can still do like 30, but I, I can't do them all. <laughs> but yeah, I, I take that with a lot of pride. <laughs> I'm the first one on the plaque. They saved the plaque from the school, so. <laughs> I didn't get a plaque, but I want a plaque because <laughs> I was the first member. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not one of those like Marshall fans that like hates on WVU. I, I was a WVU fan until I went to Marshall. So I, I still root for WVU, but I mean, if Marshall plays them, you know, you gotta give it to the edge of the Marshall because they're, they're pretty great. But yeah, I, uh, I actually went to Marshall uh, working on a couple different things. Uh, I was working on weather, obviously, because that's what I've always been interested in. But um, I actually learned a lot about weather just from some of the other disciplines that I worked on at Marshall, um, specifically with mapping. Um, I learned a lot about topography um, which is very, plays a critical role, especially here in our area, you know, with 
hills in southeast Kentucky and then the mountains in West Virginia. Um, so that actually allowed me to learn more about how like atmosphere processes are affected by topography. So um, I didn't really realize that at the time, but um, it's really come in handy actually. It's cool. I, I think, um, you know, it takes time to kind of get into the saddle, so to speak. So, you know, hopefully with time I, people show or will realize, you know, I'm really invested in the area. I think that's something that, you know, not everybody, but not everyone is here when they when they do a job. They're not here to stay or they're not here to, you know, do the job or, or just stay in the region or maybe they want to do something else with, with the, as far as a career option. You know, I, I've always been from here. I like being here. I, mean, I like to travel, but I mean, I like being here. So one day um, I was hanging out with the family and I was ropes. I was rope swinging on the Elk River and I climbed a tree that was about 40 feet high. I still know where the tree is. <laughs> and uh, when, you, when you swing off a rope swing, you're supposed to swing straight out. That's how it works. And then when you get to like, the, I call it the apex, but the, when you get to where the swing starts to come, at, come back, that's where you're supposed to drop, is when you get right out to the, to the bottom here. So instead though, there was a big giant branch at the top of the tree that was only about this thick, so it wasn't big enough to, to stand on. So I kicked off the side of the tree. I was like, well, I'm already up here. I'm, like, I'm not climbing back down. It was hot, so I was ready to cool off. So I kicked off the side of the tree. Well, when I kicked off the side of the tree, I let go, and as I was dropping, I was so high up that the rope kept swinging around. Well, it swung back, and right before I hit the water, it hit me in the face and knocked two of my teeth out. So when that happened, uh, I had to go and have surgery, obviously, because I ripped two of my teeth off, roots and all. So when that happened, the, the orthopedic surgeon, I think that's what they call him, the orthopedic surgeon uh, told me I couldn't do anything for a month because I had to make sure this, all this healed because if it didn't, we could have problems. So when, when that happened, I was sitting on the couch for, for like two days. And I was like, man, I got to do something, you know, got to, I don't know, there's got to be something that I can do. Well, I don't remember what the website was, but I had gotten an idea from a friend. There's a, a weather forum that I've been a member of for eight years now. Mm -hmm. And there are people from all over the world, and they meet and talk about the weather in their area. And they run websites of their weather stations on their website. And I gotten an idea from one of them to build one. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to need a weather station. So I went and got a weather station. And then I spent those remaining three weeks just learning from scratch how to, how to write fluently in HTML and PHP and CSS coding. So I can do all that fluently and just learn to build websites. And so I spent three weeks, just literally 12 hours a day, just reading, testing, reading, testing, reading, testing until I had a website. And I had a really basic website uh, when I first launched it, but now it's almost entirely like PHP. It's like 2,000 pages of just code. So no. it's, it took, I've had it up now for, I'll be eight years this November. I'm sorry, seven years this November. And it took like three or four years for, for it to really start taking shape. And I was concerned when the flood hit because it took my weather station out, which, you know, some people are like, you know, oh, my car, you know, we, we had cars and stuff, but I was like, oh, my weather station. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched it go down the creek, which was even worse. I was like, oh, this is not good, so. Um, so yeah, I thought the weather station website was going to die for a while, and it came back, so I rebuilt it. Uh, the flood hit in June 2016. I rebuilt the website during the winter and relaunched on April 2017. And so since then, I've had the weather station up. So that was very gratifying, because I didn't think it was going to come back. So. <laughs> I didn't know you, there was so much to fits weather. Oh yeah, yeah it's, got a, it's got an interesting story to it, it's that's for sure. following too. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I never really cared about that because I, I was always trying to, when I built a website, I, I was almost using a website more as like a learning tool for myself, mm -hmm. you know, just from building websites and then just using what I have learned to, to make a, a public eye, so to speak. So I was using what I was learning and publishing things online just to kind of get my name out there. So I kind of tried to use it as like my own platform. Mm -hmm. um, but so I never really cared so much like who, like how many people were on it or, you know, oh, and got a hundred clicks or whatever, or any of that. You have to know. You have to know. Yeah, I mean, I have, a, of course I have a tracker on there, you know, uh -huh. with a web click thing on there. And but what are you up to now? Um, well, it got reset after the flood. So uh, the website was down for almost a year. And I, so all together we were close to 60,000.
Yeah. Not too shabby for a high school project. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it. So <laughs> hopefully I'll, I just use it more. I have like maybe 10 people that are dedicated. They're like, hey, I check your weather station. And they'll always like send me hate emails when my weather station goes down or my power goes out. So <laughs> you already like you another reason that I built my website. So. <laughs> But this isn't really about the website. This is more about like my weather philosophy, so to speak. But okay. so I remember when I was building the website, I had rem I had remembered like um, seeing like some different um, posts, and th there are a lot of uh, websites out there that provide very general information. It's not any different than when like when you go in your iPhone and it tells you like, oh, it's g gonna do this in Charleston, but it says a, like something different for like Rio de Janeiro and you know in South America or whatever. So like, I take a lot of pride in focusing on um, one area, so like in our DMA, uh, for weather forecasting. So not only are we looking at what's going on around the DMA, but we're taking into effect, you know, I like to take into effect the topography of the DMA, and that's something that, um, you know, weather models and, and apps and things, they don't take that kind of stuff into consideration when they, when they present you with a product. So the product, is very, um, I take a lot of pride in making sure that the product is right from different angles. I like to put, definitely put that local touch on forecasting. And I spend a lot of time, you know, working on that to make sure that it's as accurate as possible. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I plan on absolutely doing the same thing, you know, with, with our forecast here, you know, and there's nothing wrong, inherently wrong with weather models, but I mean, they don't take it, many don't take into account some of the, the local processes that are going on, whether it's the topography here or the subtle wind changes. I mean, we have a lot of, with us having hills and, and mountains, we have a lot of differences uh, that cause quite a difference in what is actually happening outside the doorstep versus what's going on in the weather model or in the guidance that is, that is issued out. So I, I like to definitely, um, I, I like to definitely put that local touch to it to, you know, to make it as accurate as possible. That's not even thing I would have known to even ask you about. But it's <laughs> impressive, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to make that out there. I mean, we, I, I've spent a lot of time, like, it's work, just working on just the local aspect of it. There's a, just a lot to take in. And it, it makes the weather forecasting a lot more complicated. I mean, you know, there are some days where the mountain, most days, you know, people are like, well, I'll go up to the mountains and it's going to be cooler. Well, that's not always the case. I mean, there are certain things that are going on where the temperature might be near the same or it could even be warmer. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different processes that go on. And like I said, nothing wrong with weather models, but sometimes they miss out on that kind of stuff. It's, I look at it more as like, this is what the weather model is thinking, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that's what is right. You just kind of take it with a grain of salt. Like if, it'd be like if a friend came up to me and, you know, went to this restaurant and said, oh, it's great, you gotta check it out, but I gotta, check, I gotta look at it myself. You gotta look at the menu in detail. Yeah, exactly, you gotta look at it yourself to, to I, I like using food, food references, so. <laughs>